evening, everyone. Eileen, opening statement, please. Planning Board meeting, Thursday, March 5th, 2020. I hereby declare this meeting of the Howell Township Planning Board to be open. Adequate notice having been given pursuant to the New Jersey Open Public Meeting Act in the following manner. First, on January 27th, 2020, a copy of said notice was mailed to the Asbury Park Press and the Tritown News. Second, on January 27, 2020, a copy of said notice was hand-delivered to the clerk of the Township of Howell. Third, on January 27, 2020, said notice was posted in the office of the Planning Board and on the bulletin board in the Howell Township Municipal Building, 4567 Route 9, Howell Township, New Jersey. In accordance with the Fire Prevention Code and your safety, please be advised that this facility is designed with two emergency exits, which are on your right at the front and rear of the meeting room. Furthermore, smoking is not permitted in the municipal building. Please take note that this meeting is being videotaped for possible future broadcast on Howell Township TV 77. Thank you. Roll call, please. Mr. Bozovic? Here. My mic isn't working. Uh oh. Is you want to move over to here? Yeah. Come on. That works. It sounds like it's working. Just wait till he gets settled. All right, that's better. Okay, we'll start over. Mr. Bozovic? Here. Mr. Dorado? Here. Mr. Husser has been excused. Chief Kudrick has been excused. Mr. Leggio? Here. Mr. Nicastro has been excused. Mr. Seaman? Here. Mr. Everett? Here. Deputy Mayor O'Donnell? Here. And Chairman Tannenhaus? Here. You have a quorum. Thank you. Can everybody please rise for the Pledge of Allegiance and a moment of silence for our first responders and those serving abroad. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. Okay. Eileen, before we get into the approval of minutes, <clears throat> Deputy Mayor O'Donnell would like to make an announcement. Uh, just as a point of information, uh, Mr. John Leggio has been moved up to assume Paul Schneider's position. Uh, we will be putting on another alternate in the very near future. And I'd like to take the opportunity to thank Paul for his many decades of service to Howell Township. Amen. He's been invaluable. He's an asset to every committee he's ever served on. He'll be sorely missed, and I hope he comes back to visit us soon. I concur. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Approval of minutes, please. Regular meeting, January 30, 2020. Eligible voters, Mr. Dorado, Mr. Seaman, Mr. Leggio, Deputy Mayor O'Donnell, and myself. We have a motion. Motion to approve the uh, minutes of January 30th, 2020. I have a second. Second. Roll call, please. Mr. Dorado? Yes. Mr. Seaman? Yes. Mr. Leggio? Yes. Deputy Mayor O'Donnell? Yes. Chairman Tannenhaus? Yes. Motion carries. Thank you. Okay, approval of minutes for regular meeting February 6, 2020. Eligible voters, Mr. Bosevich. Mr. Dorado, Mr. Seaman, and myself. Do I have a motion? Uh, motion to approve uh, minutes from February 6, 2020. Thank you. Do I have a second? I'll second. Thank you. That, Roll call, that, please. That was uh, Mr. Bozovic and Mr. Dorado? Correct. Thank yes. you. Mr. Bozovic? Yes. Mr. Dorado? Yes. Mr. Seaman? <clears throat> yes. And Chairman Tannenhaus? Great. Uh, yes. Motion carries. Thank you. Vouchers? No vouchers this evening. Correspondence? The only correspondence I have is I sent everybody the listing for the training sessions, which is April 25th here in Monmouth County at the Marlboro High School. I need to know as soon as possible if you will be attending so we can make sure we get those registrations in. I'll, I'll be attending. You will. Thank you. 
And just for the new members, they have to attend within 18 months, so it is suggested you go as soon as possible. You already, I already emailed you, right? Yes, I have yours. Thank you. Thanks. Is it, is it the same thing as it was before where they have, like, the initial and then they have the They're advanced? both on the same day. One is in one room, one's in the other. Drink some coffee, pal. Okay. At what time is that start again? Starts 8.15 to 1.15, Saturday, April 25th. Thank you. And it's Marlboro High School in Marlboro. So if you haven't responded, if you could just look at your emails and just email me back, okay? Thank you. Okay, great. Thank you. That's all I have. All right, first up on the resolutions, case number SD-2989. Eligible voters, Mr. Brosevic. Am I saying that properly? Yeah, it's close, close enough. enough. <laughs> I'll get it. Before, I'll get it in another, another meeting or two. Mr. Dorado and myself and Mr. Seaman. Do I have a motion? Yeah. I'll make the motion for okay. uh, case number SD289. Second. Do who have a second? Second. Thank you. Roll call, please. Mr. Bozovic? Yes. Mr. Dorado? Yes. Mr. Seaman? Yes. Chairman Tannenhouse? Yes. Motion carries resolutions memorialized. Okay, next resolution is for case number SP 935A 3. Eligible voters, Mr. Bozovic, Mr. Dorado, Mr. Seaman, and myself. Do I have a motion, please? I'll make a motion to memorialize a resolution for case number SP 935A 3. Okay, thank you. Do I have a second? Second. Eileen, roll call, please. Mr. Bozovic? Yes. Mr. Dorado? Yes. Mr. Seaman? Yes. Chairman Tannenhaus? Yes. Motion carries resolution to memorialize. Thank you. Okay, any submission waivers? There are no submission waivers this evening. Okay, for the main event, we've got applications before the board. Case number SD-2988, John Schuller. Yes. Come on up. A Warhol hoping to be out of here <laughs> shortly. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> what? Right. Yeah, from channel two. You know, <laughs> all sorts of shit. Welcome. Thank you. Counselor? Uh, name well, is. I think your counselor. You rep oh, you're not represented by counsel? No. no. Okay. <laughs> Sorry. Hey, I was told I didn't need counsel. That's fine. Okay. Um, I'm here tonight to uh, for a minor subdivision on at 24 Freewood Street, Block 114, Lot 6. Yes. yes. Good evening. Anne Marie Rizzuto. I'm Ron Gutierrez's office. Yes. In law group. Would you like me to swear in uh, the owner even though uh, he hasn't presented himself? Probably makes office. sense. Do we also want to swear in our professionals at the same time? Sure. I didn't know whether you do that every meeting, but if you do, we'll, we'll do it. Yeah. We'll do it all at once. Yeah. Or that, like that'll work. Do, do, do it all at once. All at once. Okay. <laughs> we'll get out so of here. For, for the record, we have Laura Newman and Peter. I don't know your last Bannon name. Bannon Bannon Boy. Boy. Very good. And sir, state your name for the record. Spell your last name. John Schuler, S-C-H-U-L-E-R. And you are the owner Ooh. applicant for this application. Yes. Okay, raise your right hand. You want to Oh, yes. I'm together. sorry. <laughs> so didn't you could more state your name and your position with the application? Robert Siv, S I V is in Victor E, professional engineer, professional planner. Thank you. And you, you represent the applicant here? Grab the engineer, yes. Very good. Do you swear to tell the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth, so help you God? Yes. I do. Very good. I do. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Chair. You're welcome. Okay. Mrs. Schuller, please. All right. Name's uh, John Schuller. Um, I am the owner at 24 Freewood Street, and I'm seeking a subdivision, minor subdivision, uh, for uh, one of the lots that I have on my property. Um, and I have Rob Stive here for any questions that I can't answer or... Um, uh, if I could, Mr. Chair, Mr. Siv, perhaps you could just walk us yeah, through the application. Yeah. Let me just kind of jump in there. <coughs> you want me to qualify myself first? Yes, please. My name is Robert Siv. I'm a licensed professional engineer and professional planner in the state of New Jersey. I'm a graduate of New Jersey Institute of Technology. I have over 24 years experience in the engineering and planning field. I've testified before numerous boards throughout New Jersey, including this board in the past. Great. We'll accept your credentials. Thanks. Um, as, as Mr. Schuler said, this is an application for a two-lot minor subdivision. 
The site is identified as Block 114, Tax Lot 6, which is also known as 24, <coughs> excuse me, Freewood Street, and is located on the northerly side of Freewood Street at its intersection with Therese Avenue. The site is situated within the R50 residential zone and has an area of approximately 20,000 square feet, with 200 feet of frontage along Freewood Street and 100 feet of frontage along Therese Avenue. The usually portion of the property is currently developed with a one-story single-family dwelling, a detached garage, which is accessed by a paved driveway. There are also two detached accessory structures on the property, and we'll get into those in a little bit later. The dwelling is served by the recently installed public sanitary sewer and public water, potable water systems that were installed. There are no environmental constraints that would affect the property or the subdivision of the property and the vicinity of the site is similarly R50 zoned and developed with single-family residential dwellings. Um, that's the quick nutshell description of the site. As we indicated, we're here for a two-lot minor subdivision. New lot 6.02 will have an area of approximately 14,000 square feet with 140 feet of frontage along Freewood Street and would contain the existing dwelling and the associated accessory improvements. New lot 601 will have an area of approximately 6,000 square feet with 60 feet of frontage on Freewood Street and 100 feet of frontage on Therese Ave and would be developed with a future single family dwelling. And we would note that we, we would propose the new single family dwelling to face Freewood Street when it comes time to develop that lot. That proposed dwelling will be served by the, single, uh, the recently installed potable water and sanitary sewer systems. And we are proposing, when it comes time to build the house, that two or three of the existing trees on site will need to be removed. Um, as part of the subdivision, it was noted that there are a few existing nonconformities on the property. Um, these nonconformities are not being impacted by the subdivision, as they are on the opposite side of the property from where the proposed subdivision line is being proposed. But we'll go through them quickly. First, there's two accessory structures with setback variances. One is for an existing shed, which is in the north westerly property corner. I think uh, yeah, the shed on it's the left blowing up on the screen there. Yeah, next to the garage um, in the back. The, the shed has an area of approximately 151 square feet and has a 3.7 foot rear setback, whereas approximately eight and a half feet is required. The second existing nonconformity is for the existing detached garage, which is in that set, uh, northeasterly corner which has an area of approximately 640 square feet and has a rear setback of 3.2 feet, whereas 12 feet approximately is required. Now, Mr. Schuler's agreed to remove the existing shed that we just mentioned, so that nonconformity will disappear. Um, but he is asking that the existing detached garage be maintained in its current location. It, uh, it is an existing structure with an existing foundation, existing electric, and it's been there since he purchased the house in 2000. It's not encumbering upon the neighbors. There's no substantial detriment to the public good. And the detriment of moving the shed, uh, moving the garage definitely outweighs the relocation of it. Um, we do have a picture of the shed, uh, garage, if the board wants to take a look at it. Um, it's a nice, it's a nice detached garage. It was recited in approximately uh, 2005, 2005, I believe, I filed the permit. When he recited the whole house. Um, Mr. Schuler did put in an OPA request to try to find out when that shed, uh, keep calling it shed, when that detached garage was installed. The OPA request came up with a lot of things, a spa, hot tub, but nothing for the right. detached garage. Um, it is on his survey from when he purchased it in 2000, but there's no documents. Um, it was it, also inspected by the CO inspector when I got the CO on the house. They, it's two separate structures on the property, so he... Uh, when I had the CO inspection, they inspected the house and the garage. Okay. So if there's there is a photo, if the board wants to take a look, we can pass them out. Give, give it to the mark them. Would you like the board to look at the. the uh, sure. Yes. Uh, if you pass it to me, I'll mark them. Mark them, please. Here. Yes, please. And I'll identify them. Uh, there's one picture only. Of the detached garage, correct. And I'm going to mark it A1. A6. Oh. Where we are going to celebrate oh, okay. Mark. Do you normally do this, Eileen, or am I? I'm so sorry. That's all right. You can do it. Don't worry. I noticed I wasn't fighting you. <laughs> I usually do the exhibits at other boards. So. But no worries. Eileen is extremely do. efficient. So. Why she is the best. Oh, thank you. And Mr. Uh, Sip, um, for the record, can we 
release date when that picture was taken, or approximately when it was taken? Yeah, it was taken at 9 o'clock this morning. Okay, very good. <laughs> <laughs> and we know it still looks like that at the present time. Um, the sky is very blue in this picture. Why that picture is getting passed out, um, one of the, or the second noted existing nonconformity is for the location of the existing front walk, which is within the Freewood Street right-of-way. This walkway has been existing for quite some time. It was previously a concrete walkway. Again, it was shown on Mr. Schuler's survey when he purchased the property in 2000. But in about 2001, he replaced that concrete walkway because it was in dis disrepair with a paver walkway. Um, the steps that are shown associated with that walkway are for the grade change that occurs from Freewood Street up to his front lawn. We would request to maintain the location of that existing walkway, and if in the future the roadway improvements required to be removed or relocated, we'll do it at that time, but we wouldn't like to do that at this point. Again, we have another picture. The board wants to take a look. It's a nice walkway. It's landscaped nicely, um, and you can take a look to show. You see that it is not an eyesore. Actually, pretty far off when I bought the house, so it had to be fixed right away. And there was actually permanent concrete steps going down uh, to the street, and we removed the permanent concrete streets or uh, steps and put in the pavers. That's A7? A7. Easily removable if they ever have to be moved. While those are growing around, the last existing nonconformity is the location of the existing driveway which abuts the easterly property line, whereas a five-foot setback is required. Again, we'd ask that the driveway has been exa existing. It's associated with the existing detached garage. It provides an additional parking spot for Mr. Schuler, and we would request that, the that we maintain the size and location of that paved driveway. Uh, so that goes through the existing nonconformities and what we're proposing. Uh, if you want, if the board would like, we can go through the professional's review report real quick. Ms. Newman, questions prior to do that. you want? I do have a comment, and <coughs> I apologize. Don't apologize. Board, but I don't know whether you do all the issues at the end. But I do want to point out, and I just spoke with Miss Newman, that generally this board does not have jurisdiction to grant an encroachment into the public right of way. It normally would go to the mayor and council, uh, to the township committee or the mayor and council, because it is the public right of way of the town. Generally, can't grant encroachment. I don't know your procedure, and, and Mr. Chair, perhaps you've had this before. No, I don't. I, I mean, I've been on the board a while. Okay. Um, Deputy Mayor Donald, I don't. I don't recall ever coming across something like this. And you? The, um. the other thing I would point out, and, and I apologize, I didn't carefully look at the plans, but the encroachment has to be uh, measured. And it has to be specifically uh, measured sort of with the meets and bounds so that when the township council does look at it, they know exactly how far you are encroaching into the right of way. I see the picture, obviously, but it's well, not we measured. Give them that. I mean, I see your plan, measured. but it's not measured. So I would suggest to the board that it. this map, this this point would have we'll to be, tell them how you much can perhaps you make a recommendation should you choose to. Right but I think it would need to be taken up with your uh, township council. I think we would be foolish to not uh, accept the advice of our professionals. So um, if that's what Ms. Newman says, then so be. Yes. That's true. Typically what will happen is because it's in a public right of way and why it's not really an issue for the board is, you know, technically the town owns and maintains that piece of property. So they would be responsible for those steps, even though they're not really responsible for those steps. So typically, uh, in other instances, town councils will grant a license or some level of agreement associated with that encroachment area so that the owner has the right to his, his steps and that the municipality has an agreement in place so that in the event that they have to come in and do widening, they have the ability to do right. so. So I feel like for the purposes of tonight, um, you know, you've, you've heard the testimony and we can codify that by way of uh, in the resolution, but moving forward, it would likely require action either between the town council or perhaps even uh, through your engineering department, they may be able to, yeah. it may be something that, that licenses are done. Okay, so would this be one of those scenarios that if the board would act favorable to the applicant, then part of the approval would be to get all of the 
t necessary town approvals and and contracts in place for the right of way issue. Right, and and uh, I will say that in my experience, both in urban and suburban towns, this happens often, and there will there's always a liability issue. So there's usually a written agreement that the owner and the town uh, enter into that covers liability, not just. You will take it away if yep. we need it for our right of way, but also liability. Now, so. now there's also another solution here, which would be to just move the. I, I know you built them, but if you just moved them out of the right of way, the sheds, the, 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 pavers. No, oh, the pavers. The pavers. If you move your pavers out of the right of way, then you don't have to go to the council. You don't have to go to the town. Yeah. And it makes our job at the board here a lot easier. If I might, uh, Mr. Chair. Can we let engineering look at this before we uh, predispose what would be the best solution? You know, because it well, if, if engineering wants to look at it, I was just recommending yeah. to Mr. Schuler. If well, it, it depends really, on what he wants to do. I, I have I, to tell you, though, from his perspective, it's not going to be, I mean, yeah, he could pull it yeah. back, but if you actually look at the picture, there's a grade change, which is why the steps are there. And this isn't merely, I mean, if, if you look on the board, it's substantially off the edge of pavement. Right. This is the edge of pavement. And that's where it's coming in. There's also, you know, some trees and landscape features in there as well. So I think for the purposes of tonight, it's not really within this board's purview. And that whatever, you know, beyond this point, when he, if he were to move to a compliance, either the engineering department would be able to handle it directly with a license, or it would move to the council. However, okay. you know, that action requires. But I yeah, don't. Just for us to stipulate, my, I mean, for my, yes. Just okay. for my own opinion, uh, I see this in a lot of houses that are raised off of the main road that every a lot of people have steps in the right of way uh, on a lot of houses uh, I could say 20% of the houses at least that are under, 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 we're, yeah we're not disagreeing with yeah. you it's just that yep. it's, it's it's as we've been pointed out it's just not yep. in our procedure our procedure or our yep. ability to to opine on it that. so that what I would recommend if the board saw fit to grant an approval that there be a condition in place that the applicant understands that they okay. need to work this out with either the engineering department and or the town council relative to the encroachment into the right of way. Thank you. Do you have any other comments in your report no, that need to be addressed? Uh, me. Uh, so how do you plan on filing the map by deed or by plat? We will do it by plat. Good. I like that. Um, <laughs> stormwater management. I would like to request that on the development of the new lot, you consider dry wells or some type of some type of system. Not a problem. Um, there was some fence removal encroachments. Just when do you plan on doing that um, as it relates to the filing of the plat? We'd like to keep the fence as it is today and file the map as it is. And in the future, when that lot gets developed, if there needs to be a, a, new, a second fence or new fence installed along the proposed or, or the existing property line at that point, we'll do that at that point. So my recommendation would be if that's how the applicant wants to proceed, the board should consider t wanting a bond or something in place if it's not going to be removed at the time that the map's filed, just because we then would have a fence between two properties once the lot's created without a principal use. Once you, If you file the map with the fence on it, okay. so well, either a bond should be put in place for the removal or the fence should be relocated at the time of the filing of the map. Now, if they want to keep that fence even as part of the post house, so it would never get removed. I don't believe I mean, that would be something you'd work out through the plot plan stage. Right, but then there wouldn't be a need a bond to have it removed. Then you should probably show that when you submit or file your maps. The you fence just, will stay? Correct. Okay, that's fine. Um, and then we have some technical comments in item seven. Do you agree to comply with those? Yes. Mr. Chairman, um, the one relief that is necessary associated with this application is there's no sidewalk currently along uh, the roadways. As the board's aware, and you can deliberate as to whether or not you think a waiver is appropriate, but this application would be subject to the contribution. We do have a contribution requirement mm -hmm. in the event the board granted a waiver. And with that, Mr. Chairman, I don't have anything further. I don't think there's any sidewalks in that neighborhood. At That's present, correct. Is there? That's correct. No, when they did the sewer and water, they also stipulated, stipulated in the paperwork they gave us that they weren't doing sidewalks and curbs. Okay. Okay. Thank you, Ms. Newman. Mr. Vandekoy, do you have any questions um, or comments? I, I do actually just, just one. Most of the others were answered during the direct testimony and uh, during Ms. Newman's um, um, Q&A. 
I uh, just wanted to clarify for the record, for lot 6.01, I see the existing stone driveway. Is that proposed to be the, the driveway location? Yeah, that's the approximate location of the new driveway. Okay. And it's, it's tough to tell from the, um, from the, the plan here. Is that, um, could, you, could you just briefly describe the, the location of the driveway, just for the record? Uh, it's on the Therese, approximately 30 feet, 40 feet from the neighbor's property. From the property line? Yeah, from okay. the property line. Uh, there's one tree there that may have to be removed for the driveway if the house is extended the total 50 feet. Okay. All right. Thank you. Okay. That's all I have, That's all Mr. I have. Chairman. Thank, Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Does anybody at the board have any questions? Uh, just w what's proposed for lot 6.01, is everything there is conforming in terms of square footage, zoning, setbacks, and everything? Yes. And Mr. Seaman, just so you're aware, when you have like a minor subdivision, a lot you're really just looking at the individual lots. The applicant's required to submit what's called a plot plan, which would be for the construction of that lot. They've provided a conceptual plan which shows the grading, but your engineering and your zoning department would review a plot plan which would show the footprint of the home, the grading of the home, and certainly, um, as, as testified to, it would comply with our zoning regulations, and if it didn't, they would actually need relief. Any other questions? Okay. Is that complete that your test? Yes. Okay. All right, we'll open it up to the public. Does anybody from the public have any questions or comments for this application? <laughs> Seeing done, we'll close the public portion of the meeting. Okay. If nobody has any other comments, could we have a motion, please? I'll make a motion, um, I'm sorry, case number SD298 um, to approve the, um, I'm sorry, I, 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 I scribbled over my notes, to approve the minor, the minor subdivision. Okay. Does that include all of the things that were on the record? Of course, everything that's been delineated, of course, and including the um, possibility of engineering and or the council uh, looking into the encroachment of the steps and plantings that I see in the picture. And the bonding for the well, The fencing. bonding of the fence may not be required if they put in the new plat, correct? That's correct. So okay. we'll see what happens with that. All right. Do I have a second or another motion? Second. Okay. We have a second. Mr. Seaman, roll call, please. Mr. Bosvick? Yes. Mr. Dorado? Yes. Mr. Leggio? Yes. Mr. Seaman? Yes. Mr. Everett? Yes. Deputy Mayor O'Donnell? Yes. Mr. Uh, Chairman Tannenhaus? Yes. Motion carries. Thank you. Have a Thank good day. You. Thank you very Thank you. much. Thank you. You all have a good night. Thank you too. You. Lots of traffic on the way out. <laughs> okay. Excellent. Do we have any reason to go into executive session? Seeing none, do I have a motion? Before oh, we, oh, sorry. I'm sorry. Did you want to do anything with the master plan subcommittee? They still have not been appointed. I, I don't have any uh, thing from council or, or a budget of any sort. No, but we haven't even appointed who's going to be on the master plan. We don't have any master plan stuff to do. Okay. So we'll wait. We're going to wait until we get some, some, some so dis decisions made on okay. what what we're going to be looking at and what the funding will be to support. Okay, so what? my next question is the March 26th, I believe it is, Master Plan Subcommittee meeting. Should that be canceled? I would say at this point, let's cancel it, okay. please. Thank you. Thank you for reminding me. No problem. Okay, seeing that we have no reason to go into executive session, do I have a mission to end the meeting? So moved. All in favor? Aye. 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 Have a good night, guys. Thank you.